Imagine being able to create your very own water resistant spice jar labels with your Cricut Maker or Explore Series machine. That's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's get started. I've purchased this box of 24 square spice jars from Amazon. They come with a black lid and removable shaker top and these red labels, which we're not going to use because we're making our own fancy labels. Let's start by measuring out the size of our jars. You want the labels to fit neatly on one side. I've measured mine with a ruler and noted down the height and width. I'm using these spices in pouches which fit perfectly into my jars. Head on over to Cricut Design Space and click on the Shapes tab in the left side panel. I'm using a standard rectangle with sharp corners, but you can use a rounded rectangle or something a little bit more decorative, like this one. To locate even more rectangle shapes, click the Images tab over here and search for the word Rectangle. Pick one that fits with your kitchen design. Once we've chosen our label shape of choice, I'm going to colour it white by clicking the Operations tab up the top here. We also need to size it according to the measurements we took earlier. Click the rectangle and go up to the tiny padlock at the top and unlock it. Then we simply enter the height and width measurement of our label. Now I'm going to create a line for the top and bottom of our label. Again, go over to the Shapes tab and click on Score Line. Once you have your score line, we're going to go to the Operations drop-down up the top here and change it to Print Then Cut, which will turn it into a solid line. We're going to rotate it so that it's horizontal and drag it over to the top of our rectangle like so, where we can resize it to fit the dimensions. Then we're going to duplicate this line by going over to the top right hand corner here and then once duplicated drag it to the bottom. To ensure everything is all lined up, highlight all of your objects on the canvas and use the align function up here. Click centre horizontal. Then we're going to attach the two lines to the label so they don't move around. If you want a thicker line, you can go to the Images tab, just like we did for the rectangle, and type the word Line. You can see here there are thicker lines, as well as some fancy flourish lines. Let's pick a font for our labels, which I find is the most difficult part. I downloaded this font from DaFont, it's called Dolce Vita. The great thing about many fonts from DaFont is they come in a light and bold version of the same font, which is great when you want a bit of contrast between the words on your label. You'll notice on my labels I have a bold font for the main word, like vegetable, and then a thinner and smaller sized font for other words, in this case, stock. For consistency, you'll want all of your font sizes to be the same across all of the jars. And in order to make sure everything fits on our label, we need to locate the label that will have the longest word. This is the maximum length we'll need to fit the jar label size. For me, it was the word seasoning, which had nine letters. So I'm starting with the all-purpose seasoning label first to make my template. I want the word seasoning to be about half a centimeter shorter than the width of my label. So I'm going to change the width of the word to 2.5 centimeters. Now we can see the font size over here. I'm going to round this down to a font size of 5.5. Font size 5.5 now becomes the font size we will use for the rest of our labels. And this will ensure that the words are consistent across all of our labels. The other way is to make all of your words 2.5 centimeters in length but this will leave you with some large words and some smaller words like so. It really depends on your own preference. Now let's create the thin word for all purpose. So again, go to the text tab, locate your font of choice. I've gone with this light version of the Dolce Vita font, which you can see is a lot thinner. I'm going to size this word to a little bit smaller than our main word. So let's give it a font size of four. Space the words all purpose just above the word seasoning and we need to make sure that both are centered so click all purpose and seasoning together go up to align and click center horizontally 
let's group these two lines so they stay together. Then we need to align the words with our actual label rectangle. So highlight everything and click Align, then Center. This will place the words right in the center of your label. We want to print and cut these labels, so we're going to highlight everything and click Flatten. And you'll notice when I do this in the Layers panel on the right hand side, all of our layers have been combined into one print then cut. For this purpose, I'm going to unflatten so we can make multiple labels. To create a second label, highlight all of the objects and duplicate. Then adjust the words as needed and follow the same steps to align everything. Sometimes you might not need two rows of words and you can simply delete the thin lettering. Don't forget to flatten after each new label is created. Keep going until all your labels are complete. The best part about using print then cut for these labels is you can also choose whatever colour you like by selecting the rectangle in the layers panel and changing the color under the operations tab. Change your labels to black or gray and use a white colored font. To give your labels a patterned look, choose from the unique patterns in the print type dropdown. The possibilities are endless. Once you're happy with your labels, click make it with print then cut, you'll be able to fit 17 labels onto one printable page, depending on the size of your labels, of course. I'm using the system dialog box so I can change the print quality to best under the preferences button. This will be unique to your individual printer. I'm using Cricut branded printable vinyl, but any adhesive paper will do. Be sure to check the alignment of your paper before printing, so you're printing on the correct side. Once printed, we're going to make our labels water resistant by separating a laminator pouch into two, placing the laminator sheet just on the top of your sticker page, and then running it through the laminator. You could also use clear contact. Stick your laminated sticker sheet onto a Cricut mat and feed it through your machine. Your Cricut will shine a light over the black detection box before making the cuts. Here we have our finished cutout labels and I think they look pretty professional. Be sure to clean your jars before you use them and ensure the surface you're applying the vinyl to is nice and dry. Peel the backing off your label and apply it to the jar making sure everything lines up perfectly. Now let's do our water resistant testing. You can see when I pour water over the label, it doesn't get wet. I wouldn't recommend soaking the label or putting them in the dishwasher, but they should stay in place with some hand washing. Simply fill your spice jars with your spices and pop them neatly away in your kitchen. Feeling very proud that you made your very own fancy spice jar labels. Thanks for watching.